We work on a range of projects here at the Community Nursery in Karingai. We've got our native bees, we've got our seed propagation shed where we create plants for our bush care programs and other community events. But one of the really exciting projects that we're working on is the conservation for Haloragodendron leucasii. It's an endangered species that's very restricted, mostly around Karingai, and we're working to create an ex situ population as an insurance policy for the wild population and hopefully to secure it in the wild. We're going to have a chat with some of the key players about what they're doing and the science behind keeping a species like this alive. So we've got this example of how here and we've got a huge amount of biodiversity around us. Why are we spending so much resources and so much time on, on this plant? Well, apart from the fact it's just a cool plant, um, just scientifically, it's quite unique. It's such an old lineage, so unique to this part of the world as well. It's also a great plant for trying to solve and test and trial different methods of conservation as well. Like trying to solve these genetic questions can be applied to the conservation of other species. So we've heard about how there's not that many individual plants out in nature of the Haloragodendron but that doesn't tell us the whole story. What we really need to know is the genomics, and that's what you've been working on. Yes, uh, we know that the species is highly clonal and it grows widespread underground, so it makes it difficult to count how many individuals we have in the wild, or if they are from one single source of plant and they are just clones from the same plant. So that's why we need genetics to check it, so we can assess how much genetic diversity we have because we need genetic diversity for the species to be adaptable to environmental pressures that it might face in the future. So if we step back and we've worked out what the genetic variation within the species is and you've collected the samples so you know where each of those genetic samples come from, how do we then use that information to help us conserve the species in the wild? Yes, in this case um, after we got the data back from the sequencing, we analyzed everything and we couldn't find that the species, the species actually has only seven different genets, only seven different genetic sources. So most of the plants are clones from these seven different individuals. And the next step now is to try to cross those seven genets to be able to have new genetic combinations. So we increase the genetic diversity by doing that because the species is not able at the moment to do that in the wild. We've got the community nursery at council where a lot of volunteers from the community come and they help us to propagate plants and all sorts of things to help support the bush care programs and the other programs that are run across Karingai. But they also help in the conservation efforts for the threatened species that we're dealing with. And in this case, the Haloragodendron leucocyte. We'll go and have a quick look at what they're up to. Hi, I'm Ashley Pointer, and I'm the uh, Environmental Programs Volunteer and Nursery Officer at Karinga. Um, we're here in the propagation shed where we uh, propagate local plants uh, for sale in the wildflower garden, also for environmental programs. And uh, yeah, we're lucky to host the, some of the endangered species collections, such as the Haloragodendron leucasii, uh, having a it's great to be a part of the program. Uh, we've got Sibylla and Pete here uh, helping me do some cuttings propagation. So just some species collected from the wildflower gardens this morning. Uh, we also have a great team of volunteers that helps out in the nursery and uh, helps, helps keep the place running. The beauty of this place is that uh, we're able to support a number of threatened species, uh, including uh, the Haloragodendron leucasii, a highly cryptic species, species that is poorly known, and it is a real treat to be able to support such a species. With 1,100 hectares of bushland in Karingai, we know this thing is really rare in the landscape, and to be able to support a species like this, something I love. I'm here with Eric Oman, who's the Senior Threatened Species Officer with the New South Wales State Government Saving Our Species Program. And Erica, you work across a number of different species. 
Yes, Jacob, we have over a thousand entities listed in New South Wales as threatened, be they plants, animals, fungi, ecological communities. So under the Saving Our Species program, we have a strategy for each of those entities mm. that are listed. So how's just one of those thousand things that are, are listed in New South Wales? And then we bring together a team to work on each one. So even though how's just one species, it has all of these different components for a conservation project like this. So you've assembled a whole team together. It takes a lot of partners to, to undertake these projects. So we work with the different land managers. So for HAL, it's the Karingai Council as manager of some of the sites, and also the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service, because some of the, the plants are found on National Park. But then we have your nursery that's also working with the part of the, the collection and holding that collection for us. Uh, the ex situ collection. Uh, we also work with the Royal Botanic Gardens for some of the genetic work. And we also work with some of the universities because Hal's got some tricky things to be solved yes, and sure does. questions. So we're working with both the University of New South Wales and the University of Sydney on some of those uh, questions yeah. and research that we require. And you did say endgame, so am I allowed to ask, how long does a project like this last? Like, what are we aiming for? And from taking on a conservation project to saying, yeah, we've got a healthy population in the wild and we can move on to our focus to another species. Under the Saving Our Species program, we work on a 100 year strategy. So they are really long term. Uh, work started on how uh, many decades ago, it'll be through our lifetime and into the next generation. 100 years, quite a career. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Chantelle, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. So Chantelle, we've been all over the wildflower gardens today. We've chatted with Joel about HAL in its natural environment. We spoke to Erica about bringing together a conservation program like this. And we spoke to Carolini about some of the genomics that are going on behind the scenes to help support this species. You're kind of working to bring all of that together. Yes, I, I think I am. I'm working with all of the different partner organisations to bring together their information and learn as much as we can about this species uh, as a model species for what we can do to conserve other threatened plants. Do you want to take us through some of that complexity and how you're bringing it together and about all those different elements in the conservation of how? We have this incredible ex situ collection here and that means that the wild plants can be safe and um, no one will be introducing any diseases. And we're using this ex situ collection to answer a whole range of research questions for the species. The first thing, surprisingly, that you might not know uh, is that no one knows how long it takes for flowers to be produced. So these little um, bread tags here, very sophisticated, we are tagging different branches and we are going to be tracking uh, how long the buds take to develop and when they open. Once the flowers have opened, like this one here, we are going to be uh, looking at the anthers underneath the microscope and checking that the anthers have dehisced or opened. Once the anthers have opened, we can take the pollen and we can transfer the pollen between genets. So this is genet three and this is genet four. And what we're going to try and do is transfer the pollen between genetically unrelated individuals to see if we can get viable fruit. If we can get viable fruit, that would be a huge win for the species. The other thing we're doing though, is crossing it with a different Haloragodendron called Gibsonii to see if we can get viable fruit that way. What we do is we take the pollen and we put it on some sucrose or some sugar solution, which is just like the female part of the flower, the stigma. And if it's alive or viable, the pollen will germinate. It sends this tube down, 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 until uh, it fertilizes the female part of the flower. The female though, might not be receptive. So we also need to check the stigma. So we just put something called hydrogen peroxide on the stigma and if it fizzes or bubbles away, it's receptive. So they're all the different parts of the project that we're working on here. And I'm very fortunate to be able to play with this collection as well as a collection held at Mount Annan. 
There are so many different parts that come together for a conservation program like this. HAL is a complex species and all of these different teams have to work together in order to secure the species in the wild. If you want to stay up to date with how the conservation process is going, you can look it up on the Saving Our Species website and we'll put a link in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.